there's this interesting thing happening today, right? Or recently over the few days I've seen on Instagram. And I think most of it is coming from like um, conservative Twitter, I feel like. And I also feel like it's coming from a lot of people who are um, native to this place that I'm going to be speaking about. And I think it's also coming from people who are very um, anti what's that thing called um anti-rich anti-the-rich or anti-billionaire anti-millionaire there's a, there's a few people like that on twitter who go out their way to call out millionaires and billionaires for some of their hypocrisy and all that stuff right it's kind of a, a thing i've been seeing online it's been interesting to kind of watch and observe from afar because a lot of these guys and girls really pay attention to what's going on and they're eager to kind of point out some of the hypocrisies and lies and whatnot with some of these influential people who we've all essentially played a part in rising them up and making them extremely successful but they also have the ability to always remind us that we're really not the same so the story i'm talking about is this story here cursive insider Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Oprah Winfrey face backlash for asking fans for donations to the maui fund instead of contributing more themselves now obviously most of you guys know what's happening over there in maui um, you know, loads of houses and people's lives have been destroyed uh, because of the, um, I think mostly it's forest fires, isn't it happening, right? I think it's the fires that's been happening. Yeah, damaging because in August, because a wild, um, deadly wildfire swept through the island, damaging and destroying thousands of structures, leading to the deaths of 115 people. I didn't know that many people died. Holy moly, 115 people. Wow. RIP to everybody, man. 115 jesus christos wildfires are nothing to be are nothing to be played with in it god almighty as of september the third the fire in Lai laihana had um been contained while the fires in olinda and kula were 90 percent and 90 55 percent contained um according to a statement published by the um, the county of maui so obviously people are really upset about this and i guess that particular area is also um, a place where a lot of the rich and famous go to buy like holiday homes or just buy their permanent homes because it's really picturesque and beautiful. The person I think about all the time when I think of Maui is Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook. I'm pretty sure he's got like a crazy, you know, place there. I remember seeing that and I think that's the place where he goes and does that um, surfboarding thing. And, you know, it's a, it's a form of surfboarding where he's sort of like getting pulled along by a boat and his bum's always sticking out. So everybody flipping hates all that stuff, right? But I also seen a lot of conversation around native Hawaiians absolutely detesting and hating all these people coming in and buying up their land, buying up property, and essentially taking over their island, taking over their homes and stuff. They absolutely hate it. And there's this weird kind of like friction going on, right? Because I'm assuming a lot of those people bring some tourism there as well. So they kind of contribute to the local economy, I'd imagine. I'm not too sure. But I'm also certain that those guys and girls, the rich ones, are also, um, you know, there's already like a finite amount of resources there's only a certain amount of land space probably available on those islands and they're all taking it up so it's a little bit weird anyway so everybody's complaining that off the back of this um the rock and oprah set up this foundation to help get people back on their feet which i think is a good idea the idea behind it is to essentially give people who have been su who suffered from the wildfire money in their pans money in their pockets that they can use however they want because i'm assuming when natural disasters happened there's a fund that you might have to apply for and the funds only get allocated for certain things and it can be a little bit you know it can be a little bit um undignified for you that you have to a number one beg for this money and b people are trying to ask you like how you're going to spend it so i guess this particular fund that oprah and the rock are trying to set up or the wayne johnson is going to enable people who suffered from the wildfires to have the money in their pockets and their accounts so they can do with it what they what they please and kind of have some level of autonomy in their life even though they've got absolutely nothing they can maybe take control of that part of it so there's a good there's a good rationale for it but the argument in this article and the argument I've seen on social media is people essentially saying with Oprah's net worth and Dwayne Durock Johnson's net worth, why don't they just completely like, you know, fulfill whatever target they want to do and give the money? Why are they asking the fans or viewers or the public or regular civilians like the communities that like to call us for money to contribute when these guys could cover the whole cost itself? That's the question at heart. And we'll read a bit of the article. 
um, that basically speaks about it here. It says, on the 31st of August, the pair posted a video of their to their millions of followers on Instagram in which Winfrey could be seen standing beside Johnson as they introduced the People's Fund of Maui. That's what it's called, which they said aimed to help raise money for local residents affected by the tragedy. It continues. Um, in the video, she said that the pair had been inspired by Dolly Parton's philanthropy and believed that people were skeptical about how to help Maori residents. So they created a fund where people could donate and the money would go directly to the people who needed it. A lengthy caption alongside the post stated that every adult resident who was displaced by wildfires in Lahaina, is that you said it, right? Lahaina, Lahaina in Kula would be eligible to receive $1,200 per month to help them through the period of recovery. And private, sorry, and provide provided jesus why am i speaking like that and provided a link where those directly impacted could apply for the fund so a perfectly simple way to kind of get the money into your account so you can then do what needs to be done in terms of getting your life back you know where it needs to be getting back on your feet and trying to you know um just get your life back in order after just this crazy you know natural event went down that essentially decimated where you where you're where you living there are some people out there also that believe that it wasn't a natural disaster some people are believing that this was something that was done in order to clear some of the land um uh, from the local residents who were being quite resilient that's something i never mentioned there's this conspiracy theory out there that allegedly a lot of property developers were trying to buy up land from the natives that lived there from the actual native hawaiian people and they, they were being very very resistant to giving up that land and that is so coincidental which i don't believe in coincidence i'm sure about you guys but i don't believe in coincidence but it happened to coincide that right after that period of like you know friction between the landowners and these uh property developers and stuff suddenly the fires come and they erupt and they kind of tear up that whole place so it clears loads of people and obviously it clears loads of land so effectively it allows these people to then come up and sweep up these places and maybe offer some of these people who are holding up for more money maybe half of what they offered before and now they're in the you know in the period of in the place of need they might be more willing to take the money that they were resisting or taking for before because they've got nothing to basically fight for except the land they're standing on that is the other theory it's a bit wild and i think the other thing i saw is people saying um what's the thing called what's the conspiracy theory there's a conspiracy theory that the government have um machines like weather machines that could that could that you know you could turn on and you could you know you you could start a, to a tornado in a particular place and shit or like a flood and shit that's what some people out there are, are believing um that's it yeah direct energy weapons there we go there's direct yeah direct energy that control but that is another conspiracy that's sort of existing out there so it gets very deep on the layers when you kind of read into it it's a little bit kooky it's a little bit woo woo but if you actually look at it and you look at it with an open mind it actually does make some sense. It's a bit wild, I know, but if you actually look at it with an open mind and don't approach it from a woo-woo point of view, there is a lot of, you know, it's making sense to me. Anyway, we're honored to start the campaign with $10 million. Let's listen to that, right? We're honored to start the campaign with $10 million and ask for your help in donating those who've, who've lost their homes. We thank you for in advance for your contribution. The caption went on to read. The upload received more than 60,000 comments, 60,000 comments, many of which appear to be opposed to the idea of wealthy celebrities appealing to regular working people to provide additional funds. That's the one thing I remember saying that I was pissed off about when t Rell, a member of the No Jumper Extended Universe or the Non Jumper Universe, who's now gone on to do his own thing called Back on Fig, when t Rell and his wife's store, his wife, um, Heather, when their store, Sorella, somewhere in LA, the really nice pink one, um, happened to have a flood. I think something happened with the pump plumbing and the whole shop flooded. They raised the, they put up a GoFundMe to pay for the cost of repairs, which is normal, right? People do that all the time for their small businesses. But these guys, Terrell and um, Heather, the way they act on social media and the way they present themselves, they make it seem like they are part of the you know, Hidden Hills, Calabasas, um, cool, trendy, you know, cool, tre yeah, so cool, trendy, young, rich couples, right? They, 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 they've got everything. They've got the G-Wagons, they've got the Lambo trucks, they've got the kids wearing all the Jordans and shit, or the jewelry. They've got that kind of life. And then here they are asking for handouts from fans who reg work regular jobs, who are normal people to kind of pay for their home repairs. So it's like, hold on, you have a Ferrari and a Lambo in a driveway, but then you're asking your fans to pay for the plumbing of your shop. Like, how does that make sense? But, you know, they raise the money in the end, no one really batted an eyelid, but I don't know what it is. And, they, and I'm going to say something out here, which kind of makes weird to make this seem like this, but please forgive me. But I have a feeling, 
that even though we have a pretty big celebrity culture in the UK, right? We are the country that invented the term wags, wives, wives and girlfriends, right? There's a whole micro economy around magazines and websites and Instagram platforms that follow the wives and girlfriends of prominent athletes and sports professionals in this country. I have to say, I think in America, you guys are way more obsessed with celebrities and you give them way more the benefit of the doubt than anywhere else in the world legit like i don't think there's anywhere else in the world that you would get people putting up with this nonsense they wouldn't put up with it whereas i think in america they kind of do i think there's people out there that would want to contribute to this charity right because they want to feel like they're they're a part of the solution and they want to have that association they want to have that feeling of being associated with oprah and dwayne the rock johnson Whereas I think in England, people wouldn't, they'd kind of call this out like, this is fucking bullshit. If you got the money, just just front it yourself. Why are you asking regular people who have bills and council tax to pay to do all this shit? Like, it seems a bit strange. I feel like there's a lot of Americans, for as many people that are complaining online, I think there'll be a queue of people who'll be willing and ready to sign their name and give their names to this, um, you know, relief fund for the Maui, you know, um, wildfire victims because they want to be associated with Oprah and Dwayne Johnson. So I, I get the feeling maybe that Americans might be a tad bit obsessed with celebrities more than I, well, more than we are, which is why you guys would excuse a celebrity couple, like, you know, a niche celebrity couple like T-Rail and Heather Sanders, even though they walk around like they're super rich and they live this amazing lifestyle, you're going to turn a blind eye when they then request, you know, some money to pay their household bills. It's like, hold on, why don't you sell your car? You know, like, why don't you sell some trainers? Like, why don't you just work a couple more days? I don't know, whatever. Like, I don't know. I, I just don't think you could get away with that in England. Anyway, we, we digress. Um, what are the comments? Math ain't mathin with this one. You guys literally have so much money. You can donate it. Make it back within a year. One top comment with over 10,000 likes read. The same clip was reshared with to Rimfrey and Johnson's TikTok accounts and included the caption button where TikTokers could make direct contributions. Winfrey's upload received over 830, sorry, 834,000 views and likes um, and 11,000 likes, usually low for a video within many views compared to the 53,000 comments. I'm not sure about you guys. I'm not sure if you guys, you know, in the chat, make your own content. But I have to say, if you upload something on the internet and it gets 53 comments, you have to have a feeling deep down that you might have said something wrong. You should probably check your comments and gauge what's going on. You probably have an inkling that it's probably not always going to be good and praise and stuff. Unless you're announcing a baby or you're getting married or you've recovered from a, you know, a debilitating illness. Getting 53,000 comments is usually an indication that people don't like what you had to say. They don't like your post. They disagree with you strongly and they want to let you know. Because 53,000 comments is fucking wild. <laughs> um, it continues. I support Maui in the cause, but why are you asking common folk who live paycheck to paycheck? We struggle to put food on the table. Who helps us? Great comment, right? Exactly. That's a fucking great comment. And that essentially is a comment that I have in the back of my head for a lot of these comedians. They essentially want to lecture their fans, you know, insult them and tell them they're broke. But they also want them to watch all their content. They want them to buy all their merch, attend all their shows, make them insanely rich. And then when you call them out for how, um, you know, detached from reality and unself aware they are, they get offended. It's like, bro, most of your fans are regular working class, middle class people. They don't, they're not in the one tenth. They're not in the one, they're not even, they're not even in the 5%, let alone the 1%. So when they see you driving around in your cars and, you know, sitting on the podcast where you've got a whole team producing it for you and then you're complaining about how hard you work, it doesn't sit too right. Another one, Johnson's uploaded, um, Johnson's upload, sorry, received 1.4 million views and similar criticism um, in the comment sections. Multiple users also posted videos reacting to the clip, stressing the duo should be digging deeper into their own pockets or asking a few millionaires and celebrity friends to pledge instead of appealing to regular people who may be struggling financially. Forbes reported, and it's something that I didn't know this, right? I had no idea she, she was worth this much. I knew she had money, but I didn't know it was this long. Forbes reported Oprah Winfrey had a net worth of $2.5 billion. $2.5 billion. And she hasn't been back on TV in a in like a big way in a long time, I feel like. 
right? The Oprah show's kind of been and gone. She had that magazine thing. Like, this is long money. This is long fucking money. She is caked up in a different way. <laughs> I didn't even know this to be fair. I, I know she had money. I didn't know she was that rich. Like, this is well, isn't it rich? This is wealthy. Another one. And owned at least, wow, okay, this is a bit disturbing. She owns 13 properties on the Hawaiian island. Are they hotels or are they all her homes? She owns like 13 different homes that she just stays in by herself. No kids. Just who's that guy that, that she stays with? That, that concubine looking dude. 13 houses with no kids is fucking insane. Um, it continues. Johnson, the world's highest paid actor, was worth 270 million. Um, to be fair, with Dwayne Rock Johnson, considering he's an actual actor more so than anything, I, uh, like I've got a feeling, you know, that 270 million might be tied up in, you know, um, property portfolios and all this other stuff. I don't think he he he, he might not have like 100 mil in his bank account. Right, do you know what I mean? Because he's he's doing so many things at once, um, loads of different gigs. He's sort of uh, balancing, but he's still probably got a decent amount of money. But I don't think he has like a one hundred mil liquid in his account now to kind of like you know withdraw or to give somebody. Um, so I think for sure Oprah could even cover his nut, like she could cover his bill. She could look after his contribution. You know what I mean? But she doesn't. Um, but uh, the. And I like how they completely ignored all the backlash. Of course they do. People at this level don't respond. People at this level are interested in the way they respond to their or react to their fucking fans. They don't really engage or talk to them in a meaningful way unless they're really asking for money or something, right? And then they also have an ability to just like, you know, let the criticism, you know, drip off them like a, you know, water off the dust back kind of thing. They don't really care. They just keep it moving. Um, it's not even caring, actually. They just don't pay much attention to it. It says here, on September 2nd, Winfrey posted a follow-up video with another lengthy caption on Instagram where she thanked the 10,000 people who had personally donated and said thousands of people who had been affected by the wildfires had signed up for assistance. We're working as quickly as we can to verify them and to get the money delivered. How, how likely do you think, think about this, guys. How likely do you think it is that there are people out there scamming this stuff? Because like, how can they prove you had a home? How likely do you think there's guys out there, the same guys that did the PPP loans, do you think there's guys out there who will be scummy enough to sign up like they were a victim of the wildfires in Maui so that they could get this £1,200, um, sorry, $200 um, fund or whatever payment paid to their account? Do you think there's, a, there's guys out there that will do that, that would be that scummy to run that scam? <sighs> You are definitely going to hell. If you do that, you are definitely going to hell. I, I bet you there's, there's someone out there trying to figure out a way. Because I don't know how they verify if you had a property there, if you lived there. I don't know what. I guess there might be a registration card. There may be something. I wonder how they're going to verify it. Because there must be guys out there. The same ones who, you know, um, uh, the same ones who set up fucking um, LLCs and shit um, when the PPP loans thing happened. I'm sure there are guys and girls out there who are figuring out a way to have an address, virtual address, registered and flipping Maui so that they could flip in, claim these funds that should be going to people who are, who've been displaced and badly affected by this and lost family members and shit. But hey, it's fucking crazy. So I said that to say, let's now watch the videos because having watched the videos, a part of me thinks, is the criticism a little bit overcooked? Is it a little bit over the top? Because I think some of the what she said made sense, but also I think there's an issue with the wording because it's because until I knew that they had already until she mentioned the ten million that we put in because I think they put in five million each. I didn't know that that's how it started. I thought they were starting this charity with zero, and then they were the, the the you know the audience or the fans to flipping raise the entire amount. They already put ten million in, and then they're asking people to put more in if you if you feel like you want to contribute and help people. So is that really bad? Should they fund the whole thing and just not put it out in public? Or should they, or, or should they try and set something up themselves privately where they get the money to the victims or to the people badly affected in their hands? What do you guys think? Let's play the video and you hear Oprah speak about it herself. Hello, insiders. As promised... Uh, oh, Natashki's saying they haven't officially donated it. They've only pledged. 
So they're waiting for the fans to raise a certain amount. And when they raise a certain amount, that's when then they will flip and top it up. I, that's what I think they should have they messed up with. I think it's all in the messaging. They should have started off by saying, hey, we're starting this, this um, fund, this charity up. We know how difficult it is for charities to get money directly into the hands of the people affected. We're not putting a slight on them. And we know how slow these things move, but we want to help these people because I've gained so much by living in this place. It's, it's done this for me. It's done this for me. It's helped my family do this and blah, blah. I love this community and I want to give back. So in order to give back, um, I'm going to do a fund where whatever we hit, like maybe you just do it as a time thing. You say, we're going to have this show, this thing open for the next week. Whatever we hit in this week, me and Dwayne The Rock Johnson have made a promise to match this. So whatever you raise within now, between now, the public, now until the end of the week, we will match it. Then the end of the week comes and guess what? You double your match just to kind of have some good feelings. If you, if, if, you, if the public raised 5 million, you both put in 10 million just to flip in, you know, give a little bit of good vibes. But I think it's the wording that made people feel a little bit like, that sounds a bit weird. So I think maybe it's always the messaging. It's always what you say, not how you, it's not, it's always how you say things, not what you say. I think that's the issue. Anyway, let me stop rambling. Let's let Auntie Oprah speak. I said I was going to figure out the infrastructure. We were working on the in infrastructure. I didn't figure it out. There's a whole team of us working on the infrastructure for this idea of giving money directly to the people of Maui who need it. So this idea came from a story I read about Dolly Parton, who did the same thing in Gatlinburg when the fires destroyed so many homes there. And she called it My People's Fund and was able to give people money for six months. And so we're following in Dolly's footsteps, not able to wear her shoes, those high heels, but following in Dolly's footsteps. And when I heard this idea, I shared it with uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, because he and I had been talking about what can we do, what can we do? And he said, great idea. And so we have put together the team, the infrastructure is in place for your donations now to help the people be able to have their own money, have their own agency in making decisions about what matters to them in, at this time. This isn't going to solve all the problems, but it certainly will help to be a bridge in people's lives at this moment. And as I've gone around to shelters and talked to people about what do they need, they don't need a lot of red tape. They just need to be able to have access to funds. And so that's what this fund is intended to do. And I'm calling on all of you insiders who've asked me how can you help and you've been so um, empathetic about what's gone on here and sending us your prayers we appreciate your prayers we also <laughs> sending us your prayers much you know? appreciated donation <laughs> to the people of maui we don't need prayers fund. we need money give us money Wayne and i put in 10 million dollars <laughs> to start the fund we want to continue for as long as we can Certainly, as Auntie long as Oprah. six months, giving each family $1,200, <laughs> not just each family, but each individual who is over 18, who has been distressed by this event. Scammers on the ready. Um, Scammers on the ready. We hope to make it to six months and even more. So that's going to depend on your donations and your support. So I look forward. <laughs> She's to reminding you about you that donation. below. Isn't it? Donate. And Look at this out for the people. Fucking of hell. Maui Fund. A panhandling billionaire. Who would have thought that, right? A panhandling billionaire. Insane, bro. Now I get it, having listened to it completely. She's making it seem like she's a victim of these wildfires, bro. None of her properties were damaged, from what I remember reading online. I, th I think I saw a clip of some lady speaking on TikTok who said something like, "She has armed guards on her properties." protecting them from looting and from people just you know wandering on there looking for a glass of water none of her properties have been have been damaged she's completely fine and she's receiving prayers and stuff she's not even saying yeah I've, I've heard all you guys reaching out to me wanting to help sending me your prayers and i really do appreciate it but i don't need them 
right? I'm fine. I'm in a blessed position where I've been able to, you know, employ private security to block, to look after my properties. And I was in a place where the forest fires didn't really, or the wildfires didn't affect me. But I would like you to extend those well wishes and those prayers to the people that have actually been affected. Blah, de, blah, blah, blah. There's none of that. She absolutely took on that victim complex. She's walking around, you know, all these flipping, um, the ruins of Maui, all these burned homes, she's seeing all these families, you know, distraught and just lost and don't know what to do. And she's like taking a lot of comfort from just waving at them, shaking their hands, giving them bottles of water, putting blankets over them for photo ops. She's probably loving the whole thing. Walk, you know, getting... Not hating on Oprah, but if you search a timeline of Dolly Parton's good deeds, you'll see that Dolly's charity efforts dwarf Oprah. Oh, 100%, 100%. I think... To be fair, I, I saw it. Um, big up Austin Casey. I appreciate you for the donation, brother. You know, I was just going to say about the Dolly Parton thing, and I think you guys will get a look. You guys will know what I'm talking about. I think celebrities mention people like Dolly Parton because she's so universally loved because she's such a nice person. She's such a warm, lovely human being. And then you read up about, and again, Dolly Parton is like Keanu Reeves. She's a lovely person. But then you read up about her and you find out more things about her that she doesn't even put out there. She's not even like waving the flag or, you know, grabbing a, a big microphone and, and blurting out these things that she's done for people over the years. She just exactly as someone said, here, she's salt of the earth. She's a definition of salt of the earth, which you don't find a lot in the celebrity culture because she's been famous nearly her entire life. So the fact that she's able to be so well grounded says a lot about how she's raised and who she is as a person. So I think celebrities the same way some celebrities would love to mention Keanu Reeves because Keanu Reeves is another Hollywood actor, attractive dude, does all these big action movies, super famous, super rich. But the way he conducts himself outside of movies, the way he acts with the public, how cool he is, how nice he is, the fact that he gives all his money away, that he makes the flipping stuff, all these kind of good stories. And he comes across like a good human. Everyone flipping loves him. Celebrities that are, sh that are shit bags use the names of Dolly Parton and Keanu Reeves as a way to signal like a like a dog whistle thing for people to think they're nice people too like oh she knows about Dolly Parton she knows about the Dolly Parton story about this she knows about the Keanu Reeves story about that this and that they mention those names so that you think they are also good people it's a very weird manipulative little grift where you mention somebody that everybody adores and looks up to in an effort to make yourself look better without actually doing the work of making yourself a better person. It's absolute scumbag behavior. And I completely understand now why everybody's so irate about this. The lack of understanding and self-awareness about this whole thing is crazy. Oprah's probably walking around Maui at the moment thinking she's fucking Meghan Markle. She, you know, waving her hand from there, you know, looking sympathetically into the eyes of these people and trying to pretend that she has any semblance of understanding as to where, you know, how they're feeling and where they are in life, all this sort of stuff. She wants to kind of feel like a martyr. She wants to feel like a victim. She wants to feel like a hero. All wrapped in once. All wrapped in one, sorry. It's absolutely mind-boggling and again like i said it's all about the language and not you know it's all about the language what she's been saying here painting herself as a victim pleading for the help of others when she can do it herself you know it kind of reminds me of when she speaks she reminds me a lot of like flipping televangel televangelical preachers televangelical preachers yeah the ones who say oh i need a jet so i can go and preach the word around the world um um, I pray to God and God said I need a private jet only because I can't be in normal jets with regular civilians because there's too many demons on those jets. The ones who say they need a big car or they need, you know, a boat or something or something stupid. Like that. That's what she kind of sounds like. Or like that minister in the, in, in the States. I think it was like Texas or somewhere, right? Um, where that minister in the States, exactly, um, Cloud K20, the G6 gets me to my people. <laughs> I can touch more people in the G6. I can go to like five locations in one day. Um, who was that preacher in America? I think it's a white dude. Somewhere around that area where the church is flooded. But I guess the church building, they built it with flood defense systems in place. So it actually didn't get any flooding. And loads of people wanted to seek refuge in a church and he closed the doors. He didn't let people in. Yeah, Joe Osteen. That's it, Joe Osteen. He didn't let people in for a long time until the public obviously went crazy about it. It became national news. And then he started opening up and pretending that he was always going to open it up. But he refused to open up the doors when there was a major flood near his church. 
absolute scumbag people scumbags like scumbags i don't buy the story i don't buy the narrative out there that exists that people are saying oh oprah's got 13 properties she could house victims in there whatever that's not that doesn't make any logical sense that's not you know she's not gonna have strangers in her home that's not gonna happen but let's also be fair the optics of her allowing people to set up camp if illegitimately camp on the grounds of her homes or the optics of her and the rock just donating 20 million each raggle just signing that shit off and giving them out to people the optics of that will be so much better than what she's doing now asking fans to donate like what and she hasn't mentioned anything about her pledge she's mentioned about you clicking the link to donate many many times but have you heard her say anything about the pledge have you heard her reiterate how much they're pledging and how they're going to do it no they keep reminding you to donate contribute click the link below donate contribute click the link below you kept getting reminded but she hasn't actually told you hey this is what i'm going to do with my money I get the outrage, man. I completely get it. It's really bad. Anyway, let's see the final video. This is the one with The Rock. Let's see what she's saying here, standing by The Rock, who is probably blowing her back out, to be honest, isn't it? Right? He's he's within the age range, isn't he? Is The Rock, what, like 40? Was she? Like 60, 70? He blow her back out, right? A couple of strokes here and there after a couple of flipping bench presses. Keep it moving. We were so concerned about what was happening in Maui that we were texting back and forth. And I read this article that Dolly Parton had given money in her community. See, I mean, she keeps mentioning her fucking Dolly Parton's name to evoke good feelings, to make you feel like they're good people. And I said, I think this is the answer. You said, yeah, exactly, Brandon. 80 million to the crew of Matrix. Also, remember how much 80 million was when the Matrix came out? 80 million is still a lot of money now, but imagine how much 80 million would have been back then. Nowadays, there's probably a lot of actors who make that amount, maybe across like three or four movies. But back then, making 80 million in any guise was a lot of money. So for him to give that money away, mostly to the crew, big, big boy. I think that's the answer. I said, I love it. And so we have created the People's Fund of Maui that will put money directly in the hands of the people who need it right now. So if you send a donation, just click where you see below and send a donation. That money is going to go to one of many residents Jesus who have been Christ, displaced bro. in Maui. We guarantee the optics. Right. I know a lot of people out there, as Oprah and I have been finding, are just uh, having a hard time trusting where the money goes, what organizations that I send money to, how can I help? Uh, in this case, the fund that we We're celebrities, you can trust us. We're celebrities, you can trust us. We're celebrities, you can trust us. As Oprah us. was saying, it is a We're clean direct from you directly to their hands and right away with some real immediacy because as we're finding, as you guys around the world know, with disasters like this, the number one need is money. Is money. Is money. <laughs> and, hand. and so people being able to have their own agency, being able to make decisions for themselves. Money that we have, but we don't want to give them family. our money first. That's you give your our money. Goal, is to get that to the people now. And so we appreciate Fuck any support. Fucking hell, Oprah, give. bro. All the people who were calling me and texting me and messaging me and saying, what she do I do? She better than what DSP. This is what you do. <laughs> you know. The People's Fund of oh, Maui. Maui. <laughs> Why is she smiling? She begs worse than DSP.